The reading is taken from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, on page 1181 in the Pew Bibles. I'm reading verses 4 to 8, I think. <coughs> yes. <laughs> Just check it. Because it's been changed once. <laughs> right. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father God, we just thank you for this word that you have given us, um, the scripture this morning, Father. Praise you for all that you are doing in and through Helen. And as she gives us your word, Lord, may you just anoint her. We pray for power in your word, Lord, as your word is living and breathing. Prepare our hearts, Lord, that we may receive this. And we just pray, come Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Morning. Morning. I don't know about you, but the period after Christmas and New Year celebrations can seem a bit flat. We've perhaps already failed at keeping our New Year's resolutions. Money's perhaps a bit tighter. We're back to work. It's cold, it's dark, and it seems a very long time until our summer holiday. To make matters worse, we're encouraged to have a dry January. And then even worse than that, a veganuary. Sorry if you're a vegan, but no. There's so no, wonder, no wonder people are miserable. <laughs> you cheered up now. <laughs> it's the most popular time for people to, to file for divorce. In fact, 13 people filed for divorce on Christmas Day. Reminds me of Dan and Angie, and there are lots of sickness and flu bugs around, and on top of all that, each one of us has our own issues to deal with. But it's not surprising that it's a time of year when we can feel low, but as Christians, is there anything we can do about our state of mind at this or at any other time of year? God's interested in every aspect of our lives, and he wants us to live them to the full, so does he have a solution to that sinking feeling we perhaps get as we face another day? Well, this is going to be a very practical talk. There won't be much deep theology. I'll be sharing a bit of my own testimony. And hopefully you'll go away with something that can help you on a day-to-day -day basis. So Josh, could you pop up the first slide, please? So um, what do these four pictures have in common? So we've got Davina McCall, who's just far too jolly for my liking. <laughs> <laughs> but despite what we see now, she's had a tough life. I don't know whether you realised it, but she was a heroin addict. Her sister died in her arms. And her parents and grandparents have or are suffering from dementia. Me? That's me in a beach wheelchair in Cornwall after I broke my leg with the family. 
Do you know who the top one is? Anybody know who the top one is? Josh. That's Roger, Ross, Ross Edgeley, who swam around the whole of Britain. He completed a round Britain swim in the autumn last year, and that was a tough call. And he faced many challenges, not the least of which was chunks of his tongue dropping off every day due to the salt water, open sores on his neck which stuck to the bed sheets each night, wounds on his feet and numerous jellyfish stings. And then we've got St Paul down here. I don't know if he really looked like that, but... That's supposed to be St. Paul. So what do they have in common? And the answer to the question is, each of them had to learn a lesson in difficult circumstances. And that lesson was, as St. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians, be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. So let's just take a little look at each one's story. Firstly, Davina, this is an extract from an interview with Davina, who was talking specifically about her battle with heroin addiction. The interviewer says, It's from that low point that Davina realised being grateful for what she did have was the only way to get better. She said, It's a simple principle, but I've even found that being grateful even for the little things and trying to reframe a terrible situation helps you get through it. The day I got clean was the day I started being grateful wherever I could. And she developed what she calls an attitude of gratitude and something she lives by day to day and making her almost unbearably cheerful. <laughs> and then Ross Edgeley, and this is taken from a newspaper article about the mental challenges he faced during his round Britain swim. Ross came to realise that if he approached every day's swim in an angry or aggressive frame of mind, he'd experience an initial burst of energy, but this would soon wane and he'd end up struggling. He concluded that the only way to endure his ordeal was to approach it with lightness and joie de vivre, that's joy. He resolved to swim with a smile, whatever the conditions. The interviewer, who's a psychiatrist, goes on to say... I have witnessed this time and again with patients whose lives are far harder than I could ever imagine, enduring, that I could ever imagine enduring, and yet there is a determination not to be beaten down by it, but to find some joy in the grimmest of circumstances. Well, leave St Paul for a bit while I tell you what God said to me when I broke my leg and how it affected my recovery. Now, some of you will know that while we were camping in Oxfordshire about seven years ago, I slipped and broke my leg quite badly and then suffered a further complication. We were miles from home and I was taken to the John Radcliffe Hospital Trauma Unit in Oxford. It was early in the summer and we had two holidays booked, one to our lovely Cornwall and then an exciting trip to see our daughter, who was living in New York at the time, and to see my brother and his family who lived over there for years, but who we've never visited. I remember saying to the ambulance man, I don't suppose I'll be flying to New York in September or surfing in Cornwall. Apart from these disappointments, there was pain, two lots of surgery, and the practical aspects of being in hospital so far from home. Now, fairly on in the process, I believe I heard the Lord say to me very clearly, to get through this, you need to take joy in the small things. And I just knew it was God, and I decided to take him seriously. At every opportunity, I looked for those things I could take joy in and say thank you for. Thank you to the porters who chatted to me, wheeling me back to the ward. Thank you for putting me in a bed next to the window, overlooking the Oxfordshire countryside. I could see red kites wheeling around. Planes landing and taking off from Bryce Norton and the sunset. Thank you for the nurse who knelt and bathed my feet, which was just such a beautiful thing. Thank you for all those who came to visit me in hospital and then at home. Thank you for all the lovely meals people brought round. A huge thank you to the surgeons who did a remarkable job. Even thank you for the hospital meals, which were actually quite good. Yeah, they were. <laughs> I wasn't able to go to New York or to surf, but I was able to go on the beach in Cornwall in this machine, in a special wheelchair, and something I hadn't expected at all, and another thing to be thankful for, although Brendan did push me into the sea in it. So, but he was paid back, because then he pushed me across soft sand, which was 
<laughs> really tricky. But, you know, each time I thanked God or someone else, I just felt something lifted. And I believe this really helped me not to collapse in a heap and cry and not to have my own pity party. And, in fact, I believe because I was obedient to God and to what he told me to do, I healed really well. In fact, there seemed to be a mini miracle happening, so much so that the doctors from around the hospital came to look at me. Pity I didn't have decent pyjamas, anyhow. I even ended up thanking God for the whole process. It wasn't something I would have chosen, but I also wouldn't have missed it for the world because it taught me a whole lot of things, including the benefits of being thankful. Let's look at St Paul now. He wrote this morning's reading. This is his brief praise of his life. He says this in 2 Corinthians 6. We have been beaten, put in prison, faced angry mobs, worked to exhaustion, endured sleepless nights, and gone without food. So he definitely had a tough time, but he learnt to be content and to be thankful. In fact, thankfulness is a theme that runs throughout the Bible. If you do a word search for thanks, thanksgiving, thankfulness, thankful, or other similar words, you'll find there are hundreds of references in the Old and New Testament. When God gave Moses the law, there are loads of reference to bringing thanksgiving offerings to the temple. And in 1 Chronicles, people are appointed specifically to give thanks in worship. And the Psalms are full of thanksgiving. Have a look at Psalm 136, which I think is the psalm reflected in the first song we sang this morning. And in the New Testament, Jesus is an example of giving thanks to the Father. And there are plenty of references in Paul's letters to giving thanks. So giving thanks is definitely God's idea. Josh, could you just put the next slide up? There was an article in the paper in November as I was beginning to think about preparing for this morning, which said how saying thank you can ease depression. I was quite pleased when I thought I saw this. It confirmed what I thought God was saying to me. And there's been some scientific research with brain waves and all sorts of things, which shows that having a thankful attitude, and in particular saying thank you to people, has a positive effect on our brains. Now, it made me smile because it sounded as if it was some new breakthrough. But God has known about this all along. He wants the best for us. He sent his son Jesus that we might have life and have it to the full. And he's designed ways in which we can do that. And throughout the ages, the church has taken this on board. Each week, millions of Christians around the world join together in the familiar words of the communion service. It says, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. So why should we give thanks? And and who should we give thanks to? Should we give thanks to make God feel good? Well, undoubtedly, we're supposed to thank God for all he has done, for rescuing us from our sin through the death and resurrection of Jesus for providing for us and for blessing us with many spiritual blessings. It's one way in which we can honour him. Psalm 69 says, Then I will praise God's name with singing, and I will honour him with thanksgiving. It's a way in which we can acknowledge what he's done for us. Just as we say a big thank you to someone who's helped us, but I believe it's more than that. God knows us inside out. He made us and he knows what's good for us. He knows that if we have a thankful attitude, it will help us when things are tough. Well, what should we give thanks for? If we look back in the Bible, God commanded the Israelites through Moses to bring thanksgiving offerings to the temple. What were they saying thank you for? No doubt part of their gratitude would be for God rescuing them from Egypt and bringing them eventually to the promised land. But we can also imagine that they thanked God for a good harvest a successful hunting trip, for bringing their sons safely back from battle, for the birth of a baby, for finding something that was lost, for recovery from illness. In fact, the same sorts of things that we might thank God for today. And remember, this was God's command to them. They and we need to be obedient in this in order to receive the blessings God has for us. It doesn't stop with God. 
Just last Saturday, there was another newspaper article with another new scientific discovery that's saying thank you to people is good for our mental health. So from now on, we're going to be leaping and jumping and praising God along with the cripple healed by Peter and John. Really? Is that how it goes? Well, we need to be real, don't we? Because it's just not as easy as that, despite what Davina would have you believe. So I just want you to imagine the conversation. Really, God? Do I need to be thankful when I've got the flu? I feel absolutely terrible. What does my word say, Helen? Yes, but... Now, just a minute. If you say yes, but to God, you're on sticky ground. Okay. Yes, but surely you don't mean me to say thank you for me breaking my leg. What does my word say, Helen? It says be thankful in all circumstances. Yes, but surely I don't need to thank you for the three holidays that we missed. What does my word say, Helen? It doesn't say be thankful for all circumstances, does it? Okay, God, I'm beginning to get it. As you said to me when I was in hospital, I need to find joy in the small things and be thankful in the circumstances. Life is full of difficulties and tragedies and disappointments. We will feel sad, desperate, and anxious at times. We're not alone in that. If you listen to what King David says in Psalm 42, and that's the one that starts as the deer pants. In verse 5, David says, Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? Then he goes on to say, I will put my hope in God, and I will praise him again, my Saviour and my God. And in our reading today from Philippians, Paul says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he, was, he has done. Then, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. There's a condition there, isn't there? You give thanks, then God. So God knows we'll be anxious and worry about things. He wouldn't have to tell us not to do it if he didn't think we were going to do it. But verse 6 says, thank him for all he has done. It's like an antidote. And taking the antidote, being thankful, will result in God's peace. Now, I don't suppose for one minute it's a miracle cure for all our sadness. Some things just have to be worked through. And it's then that we can support each other when we're in pain or grieving or overwhelmed by life's problems. And we need to be realistic. Sometimes we suffer from more than just feeling down, and we may need professional help. But this doesn't mean that there's never anything to say thank you for. So how do we go about giving thanks when we're feeling rubbish and life is just getting on top of us? It's not generally in our nature to give thanks in these circumstances. We are more prone to self-pity. It's not easy. And it's no surprise that the Bible often talks about it being a sacrifice. Psalm 56 says, I will fulfill my vows to you, O God, and will offer a sacrifice of thanks for your help. This most definitely needs to be an act of the will, gritting our teeth and being obedient to God. Giving thanks shouldn't depend on our feelings. If our personal circumstances seem dire, then we need to look around us and give thanks for the things we do have, for the beauty of the sunset, for the kind word of a friend, for an unexpected gift. And if we can develop the habit, it is a habit, of looking for things to say thank you for, then it will become easier. Our feelings will follow on and we'll begin to experience God's joy and peace. Now you may know it's been a tough 18 months for me and Brendan, but I've put into practice what I learnt when I broke my leg and given thanks for the things we do have and not dwelt on the things we don't. I think it's driven Brendan a bit mad at times as I've gone on about the beautiful sky and stuff like that and being able to go for a walk in the middle of the day. But I believe it's really helped us and through that obedience of offering a sacrifice of thanksgiving, I believe that we have been blessed in a number of ways more than we could have imagined. So I'm going to throw out a challenge to you, a New Year's resolution, which I hope you'll be able to keep. Josh, could you put the last slide up, please? So people often have food-related resolutions at this time of year, one of which could be to eat your five a day. 
And my challenge is, if you're not already doing it, to give thanks for at least five things each day. As our grandparents perhaps said to us, count your blessings, name them one by one. Now, of course, if your life is wonderful at the moment, it'll be easy peasy lemon squeezy, so double it to ten. But if things are not so good, despite how you're feeling, be obedient and develop that attitude of gratitude. When we're obedient, something changes in our spirit. God's Holy Spirit connects with our spirit and enables us to do and feel things that we can't do without God's help. So give it a, give it a go. Take God at his word and begin to give thanks in all circumstances. Well, to help you, I've got a bookmark that you can all take to remind you each day. Um, so somebody could just pass those around. I'm going to encourage you just to trust God in this and see what he will do. And as it says in today's reading, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Amen.